and with the doing the two weeks, then we set up another like oh a Saturday afternoon for a couple hours, and everybody mm-hmm. brings their projects back and shares yeah. them with everyone else. Oh, and that's so really, nice. That's it, nice. That's my favorite part. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when they to come see back, what everybody's right? Come up with yeah, that's fantastic. Welcome back, everyone, to Gage Hope Crafts. I'm Sarah Scully, and today I'm here with Susan Rockwell, um, and we're at the White River uh, Craft Center, which we'll talk about a little bit more. Thanks for joining me, Susan. You're welcome. And uh, Susan is a weaver and a weaving instructor, um, and I'm very uh, glad she took some time out of her weaving day to meet with us. Um, So, Susan, I wanted to start uh, sort of at the beginning. How did you first get into the fiber arts and weaving specifically? Um, we had moved to Vermont, and um, my mother taught me to sew when I, when I was nine years old, and my grandmother demonstrated spinning when mm. I was a child at this old Thrasher's reunion in Iowa. And um, so I had a sense of fiber, and my mother was an, ex- an excellent seamstress, and so she used to make all my clothes. And so then we moved here, and I was kind of at odds and didn't really know what I wanted to do. And um, so one day a friend asked me to go to a sheep and shawl festival because he wanted to sell some sheep that he had up in Burke, uh, West Burke, Vermont. So I went with him. And as we were there, um, a woman was, they were having a sheep to shawl contest and they had four weavers and they had spinners and everything. And I was just sort of mesmerized by the whole process. And um, this woman was running around. She was sort of in charge of it. And she was handing out this sheet of paper that said that you could take, uh, I think it was like a 10-day intensive of learning to weave. So I I got the sheet of paper and I thought, wow, this is something I think I'd really be interested in. So Mm -hmm. I went home and my husband and I decided that, yes, that would be something I could do. So I went up and I took this 10-day intensive to learn to weave. Mm -hmm. And it was just wonderful. I was was bitten by the weaving bug. It was Mm -hmm. amazing. So that's how I started. And then I joined the Vermont Weavers Guild and it just, things kept going on. And Mm -hmm. here I am. Oh, that's fantastic. (laughs) Yeah, the sheep to shawl competitions are, I think, they're a great, um, they're sort of like the gateway drug. You know, you see people doing everything at a really right. fast pace. Um, for those of you who may not have heard of sheep to shawl, so it's it's usually like a one or two day competition in conjunction with a larger event like a sheep and wool show. And, you know, you have people who have to shear the sheep. They have to, sometimes they wash the fleece, sometimes not. You've got people who are spinning, uh, making yarn, and then you have weavers who are making cloth, and they have to make a certain size of cloth, certain size of finished uh, garment in that in that time period. Um, so yeah, that's a fun. It a was fun really way to exciting. Get introduced to it. <laughs> they were making shawls actually, uh-huh. so it yeah. was amazing. Yeah, yeah, that's great. So you took this intensive course, and then. Um, how did you, did you immediately like run out and get your own loom and just dive no, in? No, I was so fortunate because <laughs> a friend of mine was going to um, England as an exchange teacher for a year and she had this 45 inch loom mm-hmm. that she wanted to find a space for while mm-hmm. she was gone. And so she wondered if I, since I had just learned to weave, if I would want to, you, you know, store her loom while she was gone mm-hmm. and use it. And of course I jumped at the chance and it was, it was great. It was just mm-hmm. such a great way to start. Um, and then later my husband got me a, a small loom for my birthday. And mm-hmm. so it was, it, and just kept going from there. Yep. And did you end up taking uh, more classes or did you, were you more self-taught out of books? I did. Or? I took, um, well, I joined the Vermont Weavers Guild and mm-hmm. the Vermont Weavers Guild has workshops. And so I would, I started taking workshops and, mm-hmm. um, I took, um, quite a few workshops, um, as most of the workshops that the guild would offer. Um, and so I just kept exploring different kinds of weave structures and different things that I really wanted to, mm-hmm. to learn to weave. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, again, that seems like a really nice way, um, to get some guidance and also because weaving, weaving is so technical. I mean, I'm a knitter and knitter, knitting can be technical, but right. it's, it's not, uh, you don't have 
you know, all the different pieces of the loom and then all the different kinds of weave structures. It's just, there's a ton of information there. Right, exactly. And the other thing is that weaving can be a fairly expensive endeavor these mm. days. So it's really good to be able to take courses through your, through a weaver's guild, which are going to be, are going to cost less. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's, it's just such a good way to learn. And Weavers, I must say, are so sharing with their knowledge. I mm -hmm. mean, I've been weaving for, what, 40 years or so, and I have never, I, I think I've only run into maybe one weaver who was not willing to tell how they had done something. Mm -hmm. And that's just amazing to me that mm -hmm. they are so sharing. Yeah, that's really incredible. Um, I've attended a couple of just open houses, not workshops, at the uh, Marshfield School. Right. And the, and the whole history behind weaving and how it was... You know, in some cases, looms were built into the framework of the house right. or the building yeah, so that you so could weave, you know, right by the fire. You would have your loom kind of like attached to the ceiling and the whole history of it is really, really incredible. But um, and they talked about, you know, how how this knowledge was shared and passed down the generations you'd learned from somebody or... Um, yeah. yeah, it really, truly is amazing because weaving is one of the oldest arts because mm -hmm. people did need clothing. Mm -hmm. And so... It's just, and also people did weaving with their huts and mm -hmm. nomads. They did weaving with, mm -hmm. you know, their structures. So mm -hmm. it's just incredible. Yeah, that's great. Um, and so you kind of specialize in double weaving. So give us a quick overview of how that's different from non-double weaving, plain weaving. <laughs> <laughs> well, essentially double weave is you're weaving two layers mm -hmm. and you could possibly weave more layers, but basically you're weaving two layers. And so you have a top layer and a bottom layer, mm -hmm. and then you can do pickup, which brings the top layer up through to the, mm -hmm. brings the bottom layer up through the top. Mm -hmm. And so you can do so much with color mm -hmm. and, um, cause you only need two, um, we, cause you have one thread going up and one thread going down. And so you only need two what we call shafts, um, which are the parts of the loom that come up, or or they stay level. Um, mm -hmm. So you so you could if you have two shafts, you can weave two. You we can leave one layer layer of cloth, but if you have four shafts, you can use weave two layers. Mm -hmm. And if you had six shafts, you could weave three. And if you had you know, eight shafts, you could weave four layers. So right. there's so much opportunity for color because uh -huh. you can make stripes. Um, you can weave, your weft color can be the same or different. Mm -hmm. And so it, it allows such a, um, just an amazing amount of color. Right. And am I right in thinking too that, um, so it's sort of in some ways like double knitting where you have two fit, you have two right sides of the fabric, mm -hmm. right? There's not a right side and a wrong side. Yes. And, um, in double weaving, can you also use that to make like a double wide? Like yes. Like a thing that you would open up and it would be twice the size. Yes, because you if you if you have a loom that say is 15 inches wide and you can weave 15 inches wide, you can weave it where you're going, your, your shuttle is going the top layer, bottom layer, bottom layer, top layer, top layer, bottom layer. So you're building up and mm -hmm. it's attached on one side so that then when you take it off the loom, it opens up and it's actually twice as wide, mm -hmm. which is really good because sometimes you want to have something that's wider than your loom. So right. That is I'm another about things like uh, tablecloths or blankets. Exactly. Or yeah. So that's one mm -hmm. thing about double weave, and then the other thing is that you can weave in a tube mm -hmm. where your shuttle is actually doing the bottom layer, top layer, other bottom layer, other top layer, and you're going in a circle, and so you're building up into a tube which is closed on both sides. Mm -hmm. So that lends itself to a lot of different designs, and mm -hmm. um, so. And just yeah. you're, you and know, see, like you could make bags, right, or sleeves, exactly, or, you know, all Ex kinds of things, right, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. So, so the so for me, the whole thing about double weave is that it, it just makes all the opportunities to create so many more things much larger mm -hmm. because you can just there's so many. It's so versatile, right, right. That's great. Let's talk a little bit about, um, and we'll show some of uh, Susan's uh, latest projects here. Um, but I want to talk about these mittens first. I'll just grab these. These look so great. We just came out of a really long winter here in Vermont. Um, extra long, extra cold April. Um, so your your mittens were very appealing. Um, but but show us show us about these a little well, bit. Well, um, these are double weave mittens. So I started weaving here and started going down. And then I used two shuttles to make the th one for the thumb and one for the other fingers mm -hmm. and kept going. And then um, actually these mittens were woven, and then I have 
a layer inside. So right, they're lined. They're lined. So these are like snowball minims. These are these are really mm -hmm. really hold, hold really strong. The yeah. So the thing is, the way they were actually woven was like this. So I started here, weaving here with these fingers, and then I added the thumb, and mm -hmm. then I I Down went back way. to one shuttle to do the the um part, the top part of the mitten, right. and then I went on to, and then I changed my yarn to make this fuzzy part because this is just plain, it's not mm -hmm. you know. So then I kept going, and then when I finished them, I stitched here the thumb and here and here, and then I took the the lining and stuck it back in, and stuck it right in there to the mitten, so that yeah, it's double, it's double, um, it's a double mitten, it and is. it's um, hand ovens. They're snowball mittens. They're I great. tell you, they're great. <laughs> they're fantastic. That's cool. So, so yeah, so you've got the two colors and the two um, layers going right. with your double weaving. Exactly. That's great. Yeah. Um, and then you have some other things here. Um, I was particularly drawn to this um, sort of visual interpretation uh, of a painting. So tell us about that project. Well, um, the Weavers Guild, it was really great. We had this um, sort of uh, italics change, and we were given postcards and of artists, famous artists, and then we were supposed to interpret that postcard. Mm -hmm. So I took my postcard and I um, decided to, um, instead. well, I did use the colors of the postcard, of course, mm -hmm. but I also decided to try to make it look like the postcard, mm -hmm. like the buildings in the postcard. So mm -hmm. I used a, um, a weave structure that is very absorbent, um, and it's... Um, so I would just take one thread of one color and weave so far, and then I would take a different shuttle of a different color and weave the building part, and then I'd go back to the original mm -hmm. part and go on. So I could actually make the designs okay. of the buildings. So it's almost like intarsia or uh, tapestry weaving at that point. Right, bit, right. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. sort of like, but yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it was like a clasp weaving because I would clasp the two different threads together before mm -hmm. I would go back on yeah. to the salvage. Yeah, I know. I know enough about weaving to talk about it and say the wrong thing, basically. <laughs> but that's what it reminds me of: is intarsia and knitting. The the other thing I like about your choice here is that, um, you know, the original um, inspirational piece is kind of a pointillist style, right? And the way that you've interwoven some contrasting colors um, really picks up on that nubbly visual texture. Um, it's it's really great to see paint recreated as fabric it's really cool I think that's one thing that uh, is re really intriguing about weaving is mm -hmm. and this is true for all fiber artist people mm -hmm. is that you have two colors of of yarn and it's not like painting where you can take two colors and mix them together and get a third color you have that color and that's it's going to stay that color mm -hmm. so what you have to do in both knitting and in weaving is you have to try to figure out what colors are going to go together to make it look like there are other colors involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I guess it has to do with you know which is the warp and which is the weft, right. and how many, how many of each you do. Like if you do more black and a little bit of red, it's going to look different than if you right. do a lot of red exactly. and a little black or something like right. that. Yeah, so you have all these choices to make. Um, and then you have this like lovely little picnic set over here. Um, so tell us a little bit about the inspiration for that. I just love that it. it's so cheerful and it's springtime now, and it's just <laughs> it's like, yes, let's go well, outside. <laughs> the thing, this is something that I had had in my head for a long time, and that's really what I'm doing mostly now with my weaving. Is I'm weaving all those things which I've I've had in my head for years, and I just have to try them. Mm -hmm. And with the picnic um, tablecloth and the napkins. And the silverware holder and the wine bottle hold, uh, cover, I was trying to see how it would work if I could put them, weave them all on the same warp. Mm -hmm. So I wove the tablecloth first because it was the whitest. And um, also, I didn't want my tablecloth to, um, it because it is double weave, so it's a different color. The colors are different on the bottom than they are on the top. And so I, I did what is called a quilting, where I would mm -hmm. pick up the bottom one bottom string every like 18 pick every 18 warp threads and bring it up to the top so it would quilt it so that it would stay together so I didn't have I a see. tablecloth that was you know like you could pull the whole thing apart right um so you're attaching those two layers right together. I was attaching yeah. the two layers together and yeah. then in the in the center of the um tablecloth I did a pickup of a of a dragonfly mm -hmm. and then finished the tablecloth and then I wove the four napkins which I had 
Um, they were two on the top layer and two on the bottom layer side by side. And then I wove the, um, the uh, silverware holder, um, mm -hmm. which was just, I, cu I cut off part of the warp because it wasn't going to be nearly as wide. So I mm -hmm. wove that. And um, then I wove it so that it actually was woven, uh, it, you know, I did the top layer, the bottom layer, and then the top layer, and I didn't weave the center part. On the top layer and then I would go back top layer bottom layer top layer so that the center part which wasn't woven I could I could braid it up so that when you put the silverware in and rolled it up you could use that braid to close it off oh I love that and then the last thing I wove was the wine holder which was a tube mm -hmm. so I figured tried to figure out well how big is a wine bottle and then mm -hmm. then I just cut all the rest of the warp threads and just had my the warp threads I was going to use for the tube mm -hmm. yeah Yep, so that's that so, round and round weaving. Right, exactly. That we talked about before. That's a, that's amazing to me. It's like the geometry and then the color palette and the visual texture and the striping and the inset for the dragonfly and all these different <laughs> things. It's like wow, it's it really was really incredible. fun. Yeah, um, and you and you're also an accomplished um, teacher. So tell us what what made you make that leap from uh, you know weaving for yourself to teaching other people. Well. Weaving can be a really isolated um, craft mm -hmm. because you're in your studio and you're weaving by yourself. Mm -hmm. And I like working with other people and I like teaching. Um, so I, um, we had a class um, which was in, the, in 93 um, and it was like a two-week class um, down at Fletcher Farm in Ludlow. Mm -hmm. And there were about 13 of us who took this class and we, uh, it was the class purposely was for people who wanted to either teach weaving or become professional weavers. And so we, we did two weeks for one summer and then we went home and had homework for, during the year. And then we came back the next year and we all taught a different subject. And, um, then, we, and we had two weeks, mm -hmm. uh, two more weeks. Mm -hmm. Plus we did another weekend, which was strictly centered around color. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that sort of set me up at least to have some knowledge about how to teach and, um, mm -hmm. you know, different things to teach. So then right. I started teaching, um, at Fletcher Farm actually in, in 1993 and I'm still teaching there. Um, and then I teach here at the craft center as well mm -hmm. and at, at guild meetings in, Oh, I've in I've done taught at the Boston Weavers Guild, the New Hampshire Weavers Guild, and at the New England Weavers Seminar, which happens mm -hmm. every odd year. Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah. So we're at the we're at the White River um, Craft Center, which is in the uh, main village of Randolph. Um, and where is the Fletcher Farm? Is it's in located? Ludlow. Ludlow. It's located okay. in Ludlow, Vermont. Yep. Okay. And and people can join. Um, you know, either organization if they want to take a class or, right. or join um, a guild. I've I. I've been teaching um, at Ludlow for, well, almost 30, 35 years now. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually going to start bringing more of my teaching here mm -hmm. um, because it's closer to home and it means I don't have to um, stay overnight. And um, so I'm going to be teaching. I have been teaching um, a lot of beginning weaving classes mm -hmm. here at the craft center. Mm -hmm. And here, rather than at Fletcher Farm, it's always I teach for a full week. So you go and you... You do nothing but do weaving every day for five mm -hmm. days. Whereas here, I have been teaching on weekends, and I do one weekend, um, nine to five on a Saturday and a Sunday, and then I skip a weekend since it's hard for people to give up two weekends in a row. Mm -hmm. And then we, they, and I teach here, I teach on table looms. So they take those looms home and oh, can nice. weave those two weeks and mm -hmm. then come back. Mm -hmm. um, and then we do, it's basically the same class as the five day class. Mm -hmm. We, we start out with a sampler and we do all kinds of different structures mm -hmm. and then everyone does a project of their own Yeah. and I sit down with them and we all figure out the project from beginning to end and mm -hmm. then they come back with that project and the, and with the, doing the two weeks, then we set up another like, oh, a Saturday afternoon for a couple hours and mm -hmm. everybody brings their projects back and shares yeah. them with everyone else. Oh, and that's it's really, so nice. That's it, nice. That's my favorite part. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> when they to come see back. What everybody's right. come up with. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, and do you do private instruction as well? I do do private mm -hmm. instruction. I have a weaving studio at my house, mm -hmm. and I've done, uh, I've done some classes there too. But mm -hmm. um, I like teaching here at the Craft Center because 
we have everything we need here. All these, all the looms we have here have yeah. been donated to the craft center, and we have a number of table looms which mm-hmm. can be taken home by people. Mm-hmm. Um, and we also sometimes rent out looms here too to people who want to have a wider loom, or they want to have a floor loom, and mm-hmm. they just have a table loom or um, whatever. Right. So and that's so nice for people who you know they want to weave. They have a specific project in mind, and they just want to get that thing done. Um, but they may not have the money to invest or the space to invest right. in a big loom. But they can come and do that. I know the Marshfield School does that too. It's basically you can rent rent a loom by the week and just go right. weave your stuff, and then when you're done, you're done. Um, and the thing too about both at Fletcher Farm and here, mm-hmm. you don't have to buy anything to learn to weave. You can because mm-hmm. we have the yarn, we have the looms, we have mm-hmm. all the equipment that you need, and so rather than having to put out an outlay of money, mm-hmm. you can just come and find out if you actually like to weave mm-hmm. and you want to continue weaving. So right. oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. So for folks that don't live in Vermont, um, I would just encourage you, um, you know, to search around on the internet and see if there's a Weavers Guild near you. I'm imagining there's there must be a national organization as well. That... There is the um, Convergence is an is an actually national and international weaving organization that mm-hmm. meets every even year, mm-hmm. and every odd year there are. Uh, regional conferences for weavers Mm -hmm. um, and they're all over the country and they can be in you could just find out lists of weavers guild in your area Mm -hmm. so yeah so we'll um, put the link to convergence as well you can search for your right for resources in your area yeah yeah Yeah. that's great um well thank you so much for chatting with me today taking the time out and (laughs) talking to me about weaving because i don't know very much about it but I, (laughs) i do admire it very much Um, And thank you all for joining us and tune in next time for more craft interviews. Cheers.